Good morning and welcome to this service on this Sunday or this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Our service as usual is a service on Holy Communion uh, on page 119 of the Peoples. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Jesus said to them, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, to whom all, all hearts are open, open all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful, Merciful God, God, our neighbour and our judge. We, we have sinned against you, you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey your units of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you, and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to say the hymn of praise. Gloria in excelsis. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and God, found of all wisdom, in the humble witness of the Apostle Peter, you have shown the foundation of our faith. Give us the light of your Spirit, that recognising in Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, we may be living stones for the building up of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will you please be seated for our reading? And the first reading this morning is written in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become too far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with, shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labour. And they built Pilons and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly, they made their lives bitter and with harsh labour in bricks and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their harsh labour, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shepherah and Pua, When you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on delivery, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all of his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let, let every girl live. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed a child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. 
So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm number 130 of 24. We'll say this in alternate verses. If the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when our enemies rose against us, then they would have swallowed, swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against, against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. The raging waters would have gone clean over us. But praise but be to the Lord, who has given us the praise to the teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the foul fowler. The snare is broken, and we have gone free. Our, Our help, help is in the name of the Lord, of the Lord who has made heaven, heaven and earth. And the epistle <coughs> this morning is written in the epistle to the Romans, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper, proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves as sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though we are many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. The God for the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Will you please stand for gospel reading? The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, and beginning at verse 13. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Gracious God, 
Thank you for being with us each and every day. And especially for being present with us now as we gather in this service of worship and hear you speak to us. We ask for your blessing upon us as you speak to us now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Peter, it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. It's amazing, isn't it? when we realise that we can see someone every day and still not know them. Let me explain. John travelled to work each day on the train and he always went into the same carriage and sat in the same seat. For as long as he could remember, the man sitting opposite him had made the same journey. Over the time, John has come to know a fair bit about his fellow commuter. He guessed from the way he was dressed that he had probably worked in an office in the city. He observed that he liked to read detective novels. He had also observed that in cold weather he wore what looked like an old college scarf. John could also tell when the man was running late because on those occasions he brought an Uncle Toby's cereal bar for his breakfast. And he also assumed that the man had a family because on occasions he had seen the man carry a picture of what John thought must be his wife and two children in his wallet. But although the two travellers had nodded to each other, they had never spoken. Then one day the train ground to a halt. John listened to the dreaded announcement something about a blockage on the line. They were in for a long delay. His neighbour sighed and then leaned over, reached out his hand towards John and said, Hi, I'm Jim. At that moment, their relationship changed. John had known a certain, about, certain amount about Jim from his observations, but he could never have said that he knew him. And had Jim not taken the initiative, perhaps they would have always remained strangers. In a way, the same sort of thing happened to Peter in the Gospel reading that we had today. Peter had been with John for some time, following wherever he went, listening and observing. He knew a lot about him, where he came from, his family background. He had heard his teachings. He would seen things that Jesus had done, the way he treated the sick, the poor and the outcast. But did he really know him? Did anyone outside his immediate family really know him? Peter wasn't alone in his wondering. People had all sorts of theories about Jesus, who he might be and what his mission was. No doubt they talk about it amongst themselves. After all, no one could do the kinds of things that Jesus had done unless he had been sent by God. But no one even a tight band of Jesus' disciples could really claim to know who he was. And so, when Jesus finally asked the disciples the question, a lot of different answers came forward. And so finally he turned to Peter and said, But you, who do you say I am? Peter perhaps wasn't sure where the words came from, but suddenly he knew. Suddenly he knew exactly who Jesus was, what his teachings were all about. It was as if the sun had suddenly dawned, bringing light into darkness. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, he proclaimed without the slightest doubt in his mind. What had happened? How did Peter know this? He'd known about as much as anyone could know about a person. He followed him. He'd seen what he did. He'd hung on to every word. But now he had taken a decisive step further. He'd moved simply beyond knowing about Jesus and begun truly to know him. He recognised Jesus what had, in Jesus what had happened. It wasn't a step that Peter or anyone else could take alone. It was a step that only could be taken with the help of God. 
who is nothing less than a gift from God himself. There are many ways, many opportunities to learn about God. We can read books, watch television programs or videos, listen to tapes, or hear skillful teachings and inspired preachers. There are, are courses we can do like Christianity Explained, the Upper Course or Bethel. But if all that happens is that we learn facts about God and listen to opinion, then it may be a case that we know about God, but we don't really know him. How riches are the depths of God? How deep is his wisdom and knowledge? How impossible it is to penetrate his motives and understand his methods. Paul's proclamation of wonder and praise may make us wonder what is the point of trying to learn the ways of God. Paul, like Peter, came to know that this was not something that we can do on our own. A highly educated and extremely religious Pharisee, Paul thought he knew all there was about God. But it was only after God had taken the initiative on the road to Damascus that he really came to know him. Peter too thought he knew as much about Jesus as anyone could. But it was only when the Father revealed the truth to Peter that he truly began to know him. The church's mission is to proclaim Christ crucified, to proclaim the theological truth that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is the task, the responsibility of every committed Christian to give witness to that basic Christian truth right throughout the world. As Bishop Keith Rayner once told us during a lecture at Biola Conference that the church has now moved on, it is no longer the sole responsibility of a parish priest to evangelise the community as it was, say, 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. In fact, the parish priest just does not have the time as he once did. It's the responsibility of every member of the parish to tell others the love of God in Christ Jesus. But we are, too, but we are not too good in doing this, are we? It is easy to ask your family or neighbours how they are going, or tell them how they could go about improving their garden, if that's your common interest or where the fish are biting, and so forth. But to talk about our Christian faith, that is another thing. But what is there more important to our eternal lives? The church right throughout the world is decreasing. People are finding other things to do on Sundays. Sport, which was once play, played on Saturday afternoons, is now played right throughout the weekend. People are a lot more mobile than they were years ago and they often go away for their weekend. Women now have to go to work just so that the family can financially get ahead. And all this means that all those tasks that were once done during the week now have to be attended to during the weekend as well. And there are countless reasons why people could no longer regularly attend worship. Unless we are faithful in telling our families and friends about biblical truth, unless we encourage non-Christians to attend courses such as the Alpha and Alpha course and walk through the experience with them, then nurture them during their early Christian growth. And unless we are faithful to our Christian convictions, the church is doomed to failure. Few people will be able to learn about God and about Jesus, let alone come to know Jesus as their personal saviour. And yet, I believe that there is an unquenchable thirst out there. The success of your personal spirituality is a witness to this. If only that could be turned around to a thirst for a knowledge of Christian truths. Peter and Paul thought that they knew everything they could about God and about Jesus, but they had to progress from knowing about God to knowing him. It is something we only can do with God's help and encouragement of other mature Christians. God has shown us the way in Christ Jesus, just as the disciples place themselves in a situation where they can learn about the kingdom of heaven and what God has done for the people of Israel by listening to Jesus. And by doing that, 
we are able to do likewise. And it is vital that as we become more mature in the Christian faith, we share our knowledge and our experiences with others so that they too can progress on their pilgrimage journey. We must be willing to share our knowledge with others, to journey with Jesus, not as strangers, but as co-workers and as friends. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us now together affirm the faith of the Church by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all, all things were made, made for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our Saviour was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his, his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of forgiveness of sins, and we look at the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Lord God, we give you thanks and pray for all who have had the courage to speak out boldly for the gospel, for the saints of martyrs of years past, and for all who now stand for justice and freedom in your name, and all your followers of today who do what you want. May we find rest and peace in you, loving you, and proclaiming your saving power wherever we may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in you we live and move and have our being, for we are your children, and we know that you are not far from any of us. We pray for all Christians, especially those who are struggling in lonely or difficult places, for all who feel forsaken, and for all who are longing for your love. May they come to you, rest in your strength, and come to the freedom that comes from trusting in you and the sacrifices of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear us pray. We pray for the world, for the wisdom of governments, for all agencies seeking to combat terrorism and the coronavirus. We pray for the government in this country, our federal government, and also our state and territory governments. May they work towards the good of all Australians and for world peace and for equality for all who live here, our Indigenous people and all who have come from other lands to make this country their own. Lord, in your mercy, your own your own prayer. Prayer. we pray too for our local governments, give wisdom to our local councils as they plan for their future. And we pray for all who are looking for work, for all who have been made redundant or have lost their work because of the corona pandemic. We ask that our governments will work towards creating opportunities for them to find new directions in which they can use their skills and have, that they have developed right throughout their working life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, that you will guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit so that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth, hold their faith in the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace, 
and in righteousness of life. We pray especially for the Anglican Church, especially the church here in the Diocese of Southern Queensland, for our Archbishop Philip and our Regional Bishop Jeremy. We thank you too, Lord, for our parish priest, Father Gary, Father Alan, and the Reverend Jenny, and for all who are willing so to help in this parish. We pray for our missionary outreach, the, the, the mission, missionary outreach of this parish, those supporting CMS and their missionaries throughout the world, BCA, and today I especially pray for Graham and Susan Lurch, who are serving in the parish of Longwick, about Cohen, for ABM and their work with the churches of southern India, for the Barnabas Fund, working for God's wandering people, the alienated, homeless, vulnerable refugees and sojourners. And we pray for the work of those of our parish to continue to keep this place going. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. we do pray for this parish of Buckwich. Help us to listen to your words for your church now and into the future. And Lord, give us courage to follow those who have guided us into mission to grow your church. Let us hear you knocking at the door of life and opportunity. Enable us to boldly step out in faith and to venture into your world with a true vision for mission. We thank you for the many gifts you have given us and ask that we may be wise stewards of all the blessings you bestow on us. Hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In our parish family, we pray this week for Bill and Alison Albright, for Mavis Bethel, for Gary Plumbill, Robert Broadwood, and Annette and Brian Burgess. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who share their lives with us and are dear to us. We pray for a spirit of good neighbourlessness in our communities. May no one be forgotten. We pray for all who are estranged from their loved ones and friends. We pray for a building up of community life, for our community centres and places where we can meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we remember before you all who are lonely, who have been deserted by loved ones, those who have recently lost a loved one. We pray for all who have difficulty in making relationships, for all in difficult relationships, and where there is a breakdown in understanding or care. We pray for all who are separated from loved ones through sickness, and all who are in hospital or in care, especially those known to us, who we now bring before you in the silence of our own hearts. And Lord, we pray for all who have died in the faith of Christ, for the whole company of the saints in heaven, and all who we have loved, who have now passed into glory. And I especially pray for the soul of Melba Davidson, who departed this life yesterday, the 18th of August. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus also said, A new command I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Let us pray. We you do not, not presume, presume to come to your table, table merciful, merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in, in our own righteousness, but in but your manifold and great mercy. mercy. We, we are not worthy so, so much as to gather up the crumbs in your table, table. but you are the same Lord. Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, therefore gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may be more willing in him and, and in us. Amen. Now I invite you to stand for the reading of the Lord. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit, the Spirit is with us. Peace the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Peace, Peace with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father.
Thanksgiving prayer number three on page 133 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praise. And praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty, our joy and our salvation that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your true high priest who you have freed from, who have freed us from our sins and made us a royal priesthood to call you our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name as a praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of Lord, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness come from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Hear us, merciful Lord. Through Christ, accept our sacrifice of praise and by the power of your word and Holy Spirit, sanctify this bread and wine that we who share in this holy sacrament may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. Who, when his hour had come, on the night before he went up to the cross to make full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offering once and for all his one sacrifice for himself, took bread, he broke it, he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, in obedience to his command, we commemorate and celebrate his saving passion and death, his mighty resurrection and ascension into heaven. And we eagerly await his coming again in glory. We thank you that by your grace alone, you have accepted us in Christ. And here we offer you a spiritual sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Christ, receive this our duty and service, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts, may by your Holy Spirit, be one body in Christ, and serve you in unity and peace. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the joy of your eternal kingdom with all the company of the redeemed, May we praise you in union with them and give you glory that through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, eternal, Father eternal, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing Listen, and honour um, and glory, glory and power are yours forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For we all share, share in the one, one bread. Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, have, have mercy on us. us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeem the world, the world. Grant, grant us your peace. The gifts of God, for the people of God come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep me in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
finished the body of Christ and really heaven keep you in heaven. Mm -hmm. Seeing the body of Christ, freedom of heaven keep you in heaven. And the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, keep us in eternal life. Living God, in this holy meal, you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your saving work among us. Give us courage for our pilgrimage, and bring us the joys you promise. Father, we God offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Send, Send us out in the power of your spirit, to live and work to your praise and glory. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those whom you love and pray for now and always. Amen. Amen. And we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.